Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today I am going to be showing you how to draw in perspective without using a ruler. Now uh, I've done a lot of videos about uh, how to draw in one, two, and three point perspective, but I've always been using a ruler and, and showing the real sort of strict process of drawing in perspective. But the truth is, um, a lot of uh, artists, if they're just like working on a comic book or something, they might not necessarily pull out the ruler every single time that they work on uh, an illustration. And so I wanted to sort of um, show you how you might casually uh, make a drawing that is in perspective, but not uh, go so far as to pull out the ruler and obsess over every single uh, line being absolutely true to a perspective scheme. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to be doing a drawing that is in three-point perspective. And uh, what that means uh, is that you are generally getting uh, either an elevated point of view uh, or a point of view where you are looking up at something from below. Uh, seems to me a little less frequently used uh, as um, seeing something from below. Very common really for it to be seen from above. And um, what I'm doing is I'm beginning by just drawing a kind of um, rectangular box which is going to be the basis of a uh, futuristic um, vehicle, like a space vehicle from Star Wars or something like that. And um, I'm not, I, I realize I'm not explaining right now as I do this why I'm putting these lines at the various angles that I am, but once I have this in place maybe I can um, slow down and sort of explain how three-point perspective works. Now I'm going to be linking to a whole playlist of videos. Uh, I've done a bunch of them now on uh, drawing in perspective, using it for um, environments and different stuff like that. And so I'm going to link to that in the uh, description if you want to delve deeper into perspective. But suffice to say, when you're drawing something in three-point perspective, like I just did here with this box, you've got three points uh, that the lines are heading towards. Okay, so imagine that these lines here, if they could keep going, they would eventually uh, point towards a single dot way off in the distance. And, and this is where you have to sort of eyeball things if you are trying to draw in perspective. Uh, normally, uh, if I wanted to do it strictly, I would actually put a dot out there somewhere and use a ruler. But when you're not doing it, if you're just sort of eyeballing it, you just have to pay attention to each one of these lines and how they're sort of tapering off, right? And one, you know, once you've anchored your drawing with one line, then all the other lines sort of fan out from that. You see how I'm doing that? And that um, helps you make sure that, that this part of it is in proper perspective. Well, guess what? Over here, you're kind of doing the same thing. You're imagining that these lines go off and would eventually meet somewhere very far away uh, at a point way off in that distance, uh, in, in that distant area to the uh, to the west, let's say, uh, in this illustration. And so that means that I'm adjusting each one of these lines over here so that it um, tapers, you know, or fans out, uh, and each line is sort of responding to the line next to it just a little bit. And that's how you can kind of find your way towards a fairly good system of perspective even without using a ruler, just so long as you're uh, obeying one line responding or, or being, you know, slightly heading in a slightly different direction from, from the line that preceded it. And then the third point of three-point perspective is this point down here, way down, if I had this on a piece of paper and I tried to use a ruler, these lines would eventually reach a point again. Um, way, way, way down to the, you know, south, I suppose, of this illustration. Although I described this as a point down in the center of the earth as we're looking down at this box. Any way you think about it, it's the, the same principle applies. This line pointing in this direction, and it's sort of fanning out as it reaches uh, over to this one, and it continues. And each line that you do as you draw something has to um, kind of be true to that system of perspective that you have uh, mapped out at the start. Well, like I said, I'm going to try to take this box here that I have um, created and turn it into a uh, futuristic uh, vehicle that might uh, be on 
riding along the surface of Tatooine or some such place uh, in outer space, but rather than do all of that real time and risk putting everyone to sleep, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do all of this uh, in time lapse, get the sort of basics of the structure in place, then I'll come back and explain how all the lines that I've added, uh, pretty much all of them, uh, respond to one of these three different points. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll zip through the next part in time lapse. Alright, so I've kind of got the basics in place here, and hopefully you can get a sense of how I uh, did all those things that you saw me do in time lapse. The key thing is that as you add new elements to your structure, uh, you're paying attention to the direction of those lines, those first lines that uh, I was putting in. So when I add these sort of wing-like structures here, they are um, in coordination with that line here, and then you're starting to think about in terms of, well, the angle is gradually changing as we reach down to here, so this might have to be at a very slightly different angle compared to that one. And this is how you, I think, can get away with not using a ruler and just using your uh, sense of how um, perspective works. Now, to be honest, here I sort of took a chunk off of the um, initial rectangular box and beveled, I suppose you would say, this uh, area where the window is going to be. Um, there probably is some mathematical way of figuring out how these lines um, work, but I put them more or less parallel to one another. I don't think these ones would be tapering uh, the same way the other three, um, you know, sections are responding to each one of the, the three different points. Uh, I believe these would remain uh, just parallel to one another. And that allows me, uh, let's say if I start to uh, carve this up into uh, panels of uh, like window pane type uh, structure, um, that these lines just remain parallel to one another, uh, these diagonal ones. Whereas these over here, let's say I put in some um, support structures over here, these ones are slightly tapering, very slightly, because they're pretty close together. But this one is uh, heading a little further diagonal in that direction, this one a little uh, more straight up and down. Let's put in a, a midpoint here to show you what I'm talking about. Let's say there's a structure right here. It's not exactly at the same angle as that one. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. You know, uh, you, I, I'm going to kind of improvise and add detail to this. You know, it's very boxy at this stage. I'd like it to have a little more, you know, I, I imagine let's, we could put a whole bunch of sort of um, aerials or pipes and different stuff that are coming out of this section. Uh, but indeed, as I'm adding them, I'm thinking about this uh, three-point perspective here so that this line that's pointing very close to parallel to that one is going to be different from a line that's over here, right, that's coming out, right, they're sort of fanning out from one another. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, move more into the detail work, adding lots of detail, probably cluttering it up a little bit, but hopefully you'll still be able to see how each line uh, responds to our initial three-point perspective scheme. Okay, so you can see how I added loads of uh, different little details, even added some sort of tracking back here across the sands of Tatooine. Um, uh, but really the, the key thing is that even with each little line that you add, you know, you're sort of consulting that uh, initial scheme of uh, the gradually fanning outlines, and it can get tricky, you know, sometimes it just, this kind of stuff requires practice, I suppose. Uh, you do have to stay focused, or you may forget which line should be going in, in which direction. Um, but yeah, hopefully this was uh, helpful for you. What I'm going to do right now is pull out my um, uh, Micron 08 Pigma uh, for my uh, inking pen of choice, and I'm going to go in here and begin uh, inking over these lines. Now, the whole thing is sort of almost excessively... Uh, boxy, I think, and I think I might have a little bit of fun with trying to um, 
soften the uh, edges of some of these lines and have this not look quite so, um, you know, squared off uh, every single aspect of it. It's a little too easy, it seems to me, to see the initial uh, rectangle underneath it. So even at the sinking stage, you're going to see me uh, make some tweaks, sort of change things, hopefully um, make the shape a little more interesting to look at. But let's go ahead and ink this real quick uh, in time lapse, and um, we're going to be back actually to add a final touch with a, a bit of, um, uh, not watercolor, probably marker, and uh, my beloved white gouache, some white highlights. Because I had done this, I don't know if you can tell, on a, a sheet of colored paper. It has a sort of a beige um, kind of color to it, and that's going to allow me to, to add some white gouache at the end, add some highlights, and hopefully uh, make this into a fairly convincing looking, you know, kind of publishable illustration. So let's go ahead and finish off the inking, and then I will be back with the gouache and the markers to do the final uh, coloring to finish off the picture. Well, I think we've got everything pretty much inked uh, as much as I want it to be now, and it's time to move in with a bit of coloring. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, go straight in with my beloved white gouache, which is an opaque uh, water-based white paint. And because I started with the uh, sort of um, beige-colored uh, paper, that really allows this white to pop. And uh, that's just a little extra technique if you want to get into this style of illustration. See if you can get your hands on some white gouache and, um, you know, pads of paper like this that have a kind of tone to them uh, are also available uh, from uh, art stores. Of course, these days probably you're going to have to order these things online. Um, but in any case, that shows you uh, the technique that I'm going to be using for adding uh, white throughout. I th you know, it's still quite a boxy design, but you can see that I tried to sort of soften the edges a little. Hopefully you can see here and there um, so that it didn't look quite so, I don't know, sterile, I guess, with <laughs> all the lines being absolutely um, coming to <coughs> right angles and so forth. Um, I am going to be using a little bit of um, Marker, I thought I might show you uh, coming in here to darken these windows. I think that will make it look a little more like actual an actual cockpit of some kind up here. Notice that I put hinges because there's no door. <laughs> the only way to get into this vehicle is to pop this thing open <laughs> and then climb inside. Uh, in any case, uh, let's go ahead and finish off all the coloring uh, in time lapse, and then I will be back with a few final words. All right, well, there you go. There's my video on drawing uh, three-point perspective without using any rulers at all. Let me know what you thought, because I'd be happy to do uh, other such uh, videos for uh, two-point, one-point perspective. And I hope you picked up some techniques here uh, with the uh, idea of using a, a little bit of white gouache on a uh, toned piece of uh, paper. It really can uh, result in a you know very pleasing uh, finished illustration. So I guess that does bring us to the end of our time here, but I never like to finish a video without thanking the people who have supported me by getting any of my books like The Drawing Lesson, my graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, Mastering Manga 1, 2, and 3, uh, all about how to draw any manga style, and my latest book, The Two Pencil Method. I'm pleased to say that I have just finished my latest graphic novel. Sadly, it will not be out uh, until next year, but uh, I hope to be giving some sneak peeks and uh, gradually uh, starting to reveal what it's all about uh, in the weeks and months ahead. But uh, for now, let me go ahead and lay down this marker. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.